and welcome to our for today's aging community broadcast today we are broadcasting live on YouTube and Facebook so welcome um, regardless of where you are deciding to jump in um, to the conversation with us from today we're going to be talking about intermittent fasting and how to prove this lifestyle is working for you and Michael's going to share with you guys today some recent things that he has gone through personally and with some health concerns that he had and how we are just always amazed at how we can uncover how this lifestyle is working for us not only in the short term but how we are holding on and creating this lifestyle for our future as well so um, if you are wondering about lifestyle changes and if this will work for you health and wellness wise and anti-aging wise for the long term, you're in the right place checking in with us today. Please take a second to hit that subscribe button on YouTube and that like button on Facebook. Also make sure you're set up for no notifications with that little bell icon and you're set up on default notifications for Facebook so when we do go live or upload new content, you will be notified. Um, and then I always like to take a second just to introduce ourselves. My name is Diane and this is Michael. We are married. Uh, we run this community here to help not only the women who are incorporating intermittent fasting for hormonal balance and weight loss and all of the amazing thing that it, things that it's doing for us, but we decided to open up this community to our spouses and significant others and friends and relatives and all the misters in our lives because they're benefiting as well and they need a support community and they want to know from a man how this lifestyle can work for them. This is also a great place if you're a woman and you want your husband to start incorporating these kind of things, how you can just kind of open up the conversation because of what Michael is willing to share in this community as well. So today, like I said, we are gonna talk about how you can prove lifestyle changes are really working for you. And we are doing that every day just by what is kind of on our agenda as we start to age. So I'm 53, Michael is 55. And because of our age, we are, you know, lining up and scheduling, you know, specific type of screenings and um, testing with our annual physical just to make sure that we are not kind of um, not uncovering things that could be problematic down the road for us. So just a little while ago, I think six months or so ago, I shared my colonoscopy experience with all of you. Michael shared his colonoscopy experience and I know we got a lot of feedback from a lot of people in our community saying that because we shared that, you had the courage to go schedule and um, get your colonoscopies done. I know for some of you, the outcome of that was um, you know, shocking and you had to go and do some further testing or some further um, uh, visits with your doctor, but those are life-saving things. And so what we want to do here in this community is talk about what it is we should be doing to prove that this is working. And what happens when you don't create a lifestyle like this for yourself that's health conscious and that you're really trying to reverse some of the signs of aging is that you'll be proven in a really harsh way what not incorporating this can do for you. And we've shared how Michael has sadly had to go through some really bad experiences in the last few months with his friends at work who are in our peer group who have just died um, because they were unaware of some things that were going on in their body. And maybe, I don't know, this is our opinion, they weren't living such a healthy lifestyle. And so Michael, why don't you go ahead and share like what led up to some of these tests that you did and then kind of the process that you're going through and what you've uncovered. Well, first of all, uh, my amazing wife introduced me to this lifestyle, what, a couple of years ago. Yeah. And, uh, it was kind of a hard concept for me to grasp at first, uh, you know, just thinking of, of the idea of doing this as a lifestyle. I mean, like I've, like I've always said here in this community, for me, it was something, yeah, I could do that, you know, temporarily for a few days or whatever, but to, to live it as a lifestyle was like a whole different animal for me. Uh, but now living it as a lifestyle, you know, I wonder all the time, like, is it really working for me? I mean, I feel good. Uh, I feel like I'm in good shape. Uh, I feel like my health is good, my sleep is good, all I mean, everything's going well, but how do you really measure and prove that? So we're always trying to do anything we can. Like Diane does a lot of uh, ketone strip testing. Uh, we, like Diane said, we've done a lot of uh, screenings. Uh, and uh, every year I, I, I get a physical with a full blood panel so I can see exactly where I'm at on everything. And I've been totally healthy. Uh, 
but I was kind of concerned this year. Uh, like Diane said, I lost three friends at work this year. This year. I mean, so that was kind of hard for me. So I don't know if it was psychosomatic for me, but I was starting to feel a lot of stuff in my chest. I think it was stress from that and just stress of life in general. And laying there at night, I would just feel like this, like my heart was going to pound out of my chest. I felt like during the day, like my chest was hurting. I'm like, oh, something's got to be wrong. So I went and got, uh, I went to the doctor. It wasn't a physical, but I just got checked up on my heart. They sent me home with, strapped me up with, you know, where you sleep with the heart monitors and all that. And of course, it came back perfect. And I like thinking, well, not just perfect, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, what's so great about getting these annual tests? If you know, and I know not everyone has health care, but if you have health care, you should take advantage of what what you know there's some advantages to becoming uh, an aging person and that means you're eligible for more testing right so we are eligible for certain testing and so we take advantage of it all and we love to just prove that what we're doing is working for us so when Michael went in to go get his heart monitored I mean he walks out of the cardiologist appointment like with them saying like you're like a 20 year old elite athlete right so He's 55 and he has the heart of a 20 year old elite athlete like it doesn't get any better than that so that just proves that eating healthy and exercising regularly can help your cardiovascular health the exercise part is for sure but we also know there's some nutritional things that you could have been doing through the course of your life which is why in our course for women I always say you know think about your food story right how were you raised up what kind of foods were you exposed to um, and so that's where the next set of testing came in for Michael. Yeah, so uh, what my doctor said, well, she's a nurse practitioner, but like we call her our doctor, yeah. she's amazing. And she, what she told, what she recommended that I do is to get further testing. Said they, she said they didn't find anything at all and everything looks great. But if I was feeling anything, you know, at this age, you probably should just get further testing. So. Uh, of course, uh, you know, it takes months to get all this stuff to happen. So here we are in August. I mean, this was early in the year. So here we are in August and I, I yesterday I got my uh, echo uh, cardiogram and a uh, and a uh, calcium calcium test. It's a coronary calcium screening test is what it's called. Yeah. So uh, I got that done yesterday. And the first test was the echocardiogram, and I hope I'm saying that right. And they looked at everything. It's, it's almost it kind of reminded me when Diane was getting the the sonograms when when uh, when she was pregnant, where they put the gel on and they just you know check you out. And and the two ladies that were there, they said, "Wow, we've never seen, we haven't seen that, we don't see this very often here." I'm like, "Oh shoot, like what, what are they gonna say?" Freaking they said, "Oh, you have a you have a a glass chest." I was like. Well, what does that mean? She said, well, it's a compliment. She said, that's a compliment. You have a glass chest. That means that we can see everything perfectly clear. I said, oh, well, maybe that means that, you know, everything's, you know, going to be great when they do the rest of their stuff. She goes, well, we don't know about that, but we're just saying you have a, a glass chest. Well, let, let's explain. Let's explain that a little bit further, too. So the fact that everything from the surface of your skin is is glass-like all the way through when they're using equipment to look through your body and it's clear, that means there's not a lot of that um below the skin surface fatty deposits right so there's not anything between the skin and your organs that's going to block right. being able to clearly see something and i used to get the same thing well mostly with gabby not so much with logan because he was my first pregnancy so i ate everything under the sun i gained what like 75 pounds or something logan? and i gained like three pounds of gabby or something crazy so like when you when you're doing an ultrasound and they can see every little thing that means that there's not a lot of fatty tissue and fat underneath the skin between your skin and your whatever there is they're looking at so having a glass chest means it's clear which is a good thing so on to the next test same day all yesterday I go in and get the uh, calcium test and it's a really simple test and I highly recommend it for everybody uh, for me it costs a hundred dollars it could uh, the information I read it could be anywhere from a hundred dollars to three hundred ninety nine dollars sometimes insurance picks it up I don't think my insurance picked this one up but it costs a hundred dollars uh, so everybody should have one it's a really simple test and they, they lay you down and they just do a full scan for a few minutes and they call you in a few minutes later and they're looking at your results and, and, and the nurse looked at mine she goes oh well, you have calcium in your heart and I'm like oh my god what does that mean she goes well you have a 131 score I'm like 
what does that mean? I well, don't have. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, she said, well, you you have uh, you have cholesterol issues because of your cholesterol issues. I said, oh, I don't have any cholesterol issues. I never have. I'm like, you know, my 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 doctor. She put stars on my cholesterol stuff. It's so good. My good cholesterol's good. My bad cholesterol's good. where it's supposed to be. <laughs> And I said, well, I don't have cholesterol. She goes, well, maybe your cholesterol's not good for you. Like, I, you know, so anyway, I don't think I have, I, I know I don't have any cholesterol issues. So, but she said you have a 131. And so to explain to you what that means, I'm going to read uh, part of this to you. Uh, it means... Where's the risk factor in a calcium screen? Well, well, I'm going to read this to you because it, it'll make... It, this made perfect sense as some of the documentation it gave me. It says a calcium score can range from zero to several thousand. A score of zero means you have no calcium deposit and little or no plaque and low risk of heart attack uh, uh, in, the next, in the next two to five years. That's if you're a non-smoker. A score of 400 or more, remember I'm 131, a score of 400 or more means you have a buildup of plaque and it puts you at a high risk of a heart attack within 10 years. That's 400. Right, that's at 400, I'm at 131. Okay, so a score of 1,000 plus means you have up to a 25% chance of having a heart attack within one year without appropriate aggressive medical treatment. Uh, there are no detectable differences in predictive value of CAC scores among ethnic groups. Okay, so with that, that made me feel a little bit better. She said, well, you don't have anything to worry about. So she showed me a chart on the wall. She goes, this is plaque. Here's here's the stages. So I'm like at that first stage. So it's something definitely to look at. So I'm glad I know now. It doesn't scare me. It just lets me know that it's there and the buildup is there and you don't want it to build more. So this lifestyle is proving to work for us because what if I, what if I wasn't living this lifestyle? Where would I be, you know? Uh, some of the recommendations that they have is to get active. Well, I'm active. Uh, lose weight. He's lost weight. I've lost the weight <laughs> a long time ago. Uh, control cholesterol. It's I do low. that. Yep. Eat better. I do that. Manage blood pressure. It's fine. My blood pressure is always awesome. Uh, stop smoking. I've never smoked. And reduce blood sugar. So where would my calcium be if... I weren't already doing these things. So to me, it's a it's a good score. I mean, it's proving to me that this lifestyle works because for whatever reason, calcium builds up in my heart, it would have been way worse than what it is if I wasn't uh, doing the things that I'm doing. Right, if you're naturally inclined to hold some calcium. Right. Right. right, and come on, let's face it. We've, you know, Michael's been on this earth for 55 years. I've been on this earth for 53 years. You gotta have some things, like I told him when he came home, like if they slipped me down the middle and peeled me apart and we're looking for things, you're going to find them. What you don't want to happen is for them to become problematic. And what you don't want them to happen is to become surface level, right? So is there a score of 131 of calcium deposits in his heart or in his arteries? I hope so. He's been living for the past 55 years. We just don't want it to get worse. So it's one of those things like with a mammogram, like the whole purpose of getting a mammogram um, is to start creating a history of what your breast tissue and your mammary tissues look like. So if there's a change, you can detect it early. The same thing holds true with getting, like we even had our son on his 18th birthday, go get certain blood tests run. So you know what is your normal range at 18 years old and when you go get your blood tested every month, is it changing and why is that changing? And then you can do some self-correcting. The same thing holds true for this new test that we just found and it's like, well, why wouldn't everyone go get that once every couple years. I mean, if you think that the risk span goes from zero to 10 years to zero to five years to like, you better get something done immediately, wouldn't you want to get that on record as often as you possibly can? And if you think about, if you don't have insurance and it's a hundred dollar test, 
where does a hundred dollars go without you even thinking about it and can you put 20 bucks away for the next couple months and save up enough money to go get this test just so you know and you have it on record where you're starting from and then reevaluate it every couple of years. So these are life-saving tests that we had no idea even existed. You usually don't get these kind of screenings done until you've had a heart attack. Sister and mister, that's too late, right? Yeah. So let's think about some of these things, colonoscopies, um, mammograms, pap smears, skin, skin screenings for, um, for skin cancer, something as simple as a calcium checkup on your arteries to see because cholesterol testing might not be enough if it's not showing up in your bloodstream but it's already settled in your arteries and so these kind of things can really end up saving someone's life yeah and the surprising thing is there's a million people in the united states that have heart attacks every year and 50 over 50 percent of those people don't know that they have a problem i mean right. that's that's shocking i mean and I'm probably a perfect example. I mean, I'm walking around thinking, I got it going on, but you know, then you find out that, hey, you could you could be at risk as well. So now I definitely will get this at least every other year, or if not every year, get this, this screening. Just like, to see, not? just to make sure that he doesn't have an issue that's not showing up in cholesterol, but it's showing up in the form of right. a deposit. Now, keep in mind, this man has not eaten red meat, I um, hadn't until hadn't recently. Until recently. And even now, like you've heard yeah. me talk about it a lot. Like we went kind of, we, we experiment a lot, right? And so we went more carnivore-ish for about 30 days and we just didn't feel good. Our body just can't break that down. And so now we're definitely just naturally falling into this more. And we thought about how we eat. We're like even more raw plant-based just because we're not into cooking food that much. We chop and put it in a bowl and season it and eat it. And so... Our lifestyle is getting better the more we really tap into what makes our life simple and what makes us look and feel our best. And so um, he went on a little bit of a, a, a meat eating frenzy with us. And then we all have decided like, ugh, we don't know. Even Gabby said, hey, in September, let's do 30 days where we're just vegan. She's 13. And we're like, okay, let's give it a try and see how it works, you know? And so what the big thing here is like, don't be afraid to experiment with some things. Don't be afraid to make some subtle changes and then definitely take advantage of anything that you can do to prove that whatever lifestyle changes you are making for the better are actually working for you. Right. If you don't, even, even just doing something as, as home glucose testing is a great way to manage how much sugar intake you're having so you can offset insulin resistance or diabetes or make sure that just intermittent fasting in general is working for you. Um, and so there's a lot of ways that you can test things and then just reassure yourself that everything's working. And I know for us, the more we prove this works, the more hardcore we love going after these changes that we're making because it's just fun when you actually reap the benefits of the choices that you're making. And, and sometimes things seem really obvious like, well, you know, well, I don't have diabetes and I don't have this and I don't have all these risk factors, so I'm not really worried about that. So I'm going to read a little a little quiz and I want you guys to answer this quiz because it, it'll, it'll blow you away. Uh, the question is, is, I'll tell you what this is from. It's from a Huff, Huffington Post article uh, written by the guy that came up with this calcium test in 1983. And uh, the question is, who is more likely to die from a heart attack or other cardiovascular related event okay a this is a a person who is overweight has high cholesterol high blood pressure and diabetes and a calcium score of zero that's a okay here's b a person with no risk factors and a calcium score of over 400 so that just goes to prove okay, so y'all start answering it yeah. and I'll, I'll give you the answer but tell me what you think in the comments and i'll and i'll let you know uh well what the i won't, answer I won't is. say anything because i don't give away the answer but the risk factors aren't always there and so getting these kind of tests and just and just taking the chance and this is what i always say intermittent fasting and living a keto like lifestyle is what i will always live Taking things to a more extreme level 
is what I always have in my hip pocket in case I have to make decisions that are going to be life-saving for me that I know I can put in place because of nutritional or lifestyle changes. So I'm, we're not super strict. We're, we have fun with our nutrition and we have fun with our lifestyle. But if I ever get a test run back from a doctor or I ever come back with a mammogram that says that I have breast cancer, y'all, I'm going all in. My family already knows. I have a place in Florida on the beach that's a 30 day water only doctor monitored fasting clinic and I'm on the next plane to that clinic and they'll see me in 30 days. That's how I like to live my life. Like what will I do if the worst case scenario happens and if I ever get bad news about my health, I wanna be and feel like I am in tip top shape to fight for my life. And I think when we go around not not being conscious about how we're consuming our nutrition we're not being conscious about how we're looking and feeling and then we get hit with bad news about our health that was totally unexpected or unpredictable you it's hard to go into a fight for your life when you're already feeling beat up and broken down so let's let's just live our life the best we can every single day so if something were to happen we have the energy and we have the knowledge and we have the experience to be able to fight for our life. Okay, and here's your answer. B. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, says, uh, the answer is B. Strikingly, it is estimated that nearly 50% of those who suffer fatal heart attacks don't even know they have risk factors. Right. And thank God Michael only has a score of 131, right? So he doesn't have any risk factors, but he was feeling anxiety. So here's another thing that we have been talking about a lot in our house as well. And I know mental health is always such a big subject and uh, conversation because again, it's one of those things too, that there's not a lot of like warning signs or not a lot of things that we're associating as warning signs to that point of feeling like you're gonna break down. And so we have had a lot of really personal things going on that we aren't at liberty to talk about right now um, in our life that, that have made us feel really mentally worn out. Um, and we've had to really become conscious about how we handle that and how we internalize that and how we respond to that and and really clarify personality differences as well so i'm the person when i'm stressed out i can go empty the dishwasher and slam cupboards for like 15 minutes and then i'm fine i'm not stressed out anymore and everybody in the house knows that i'm stressed out michael can be stressed out and he's calm as can be and he internalizes his stress and so when he reaches that point of just complete I've had enough he starts to feel it internally where I'm more of an external stress person. I can go run for two hours I'm not stressed out anymore I can slam cupboards I can slam doors I'm fine you know not that that is even not that that's the best way to handle stress but it's something that you should pay attention to personality wise and understand your personality so you know when I don't know, maybe like I can just say, everybody leave the house, I need to slam covered so I'll feel better or leave me alone, I'm gonna go for a run. And Michael is that kind of person that we have to keep checking in with him to see if he's okay so he doesn't internalize so much and then tap out, like have a heart attack or a stroke or something like yeah. that. And so it's been a really good thing for us to go through this process as a family so that, and a lot of it's just that his life is changing so much, he's getting ready to fully retire and be at home and play more of the head of the house role as opposed to being outside head of the house role. And that's stressful too. So life change is stressful, moving is stressful, death of a loved one is stressful. We know all these things add on stress and that's part of our health as well. And we really need to make sure that we're paying attention to those things too. So Mike was feeling it in his heart and what he did is he got his heart checked out. In the process of doing that, we've maintained a healthy lifestyle for ourselves. So we have nothing we have to recover from in regards to that. We didn't go off the deep end with food. We didn't go off the deep end with drink. We didn't go off the deep end and walk away from our fitness. We've stayed consistent with that. And in the end, what he's done is uncovered some other things that he's gonna now pay a little bit more attention to or really aware of as far as we didn't even know you could look for those kind of things. And managing how it is we're dealing with our stress so that we don't let that be something that we yeah, make us and it's, healthy and as it's well. definitely manageable. And we've learned a lot about this, and I've, and I've learned that there's a lot of a lot of people, more than I ever imagined, that deal with stress and anxiety mm -hmm. and depression 
and uh, there's tools. There's tools to get you through that. Uh, I know for us, you know, we have a practice. We have our book. We take our journals and we journal in the morning. We read. We work out. Mm -hmm. uh, at night, we walk the dog. I mean, there's like things to do. Uh, gardening I mean like all these things I mean it's crazy as it might sound but if you're volunteering and you're gardening and you're doing stuff to keep yourself active you don't feel that that stress I mean like we planted some flowers a couple weeks yeah. ago and we had our hands in the dirt man we were really going after it and man what a nice mood changer, mood changer yeah. that is uh, but there's definitely things to do and we we've, we've learned those things and Hopefully in this community we can pass that on because yeah. this is a huge issue and it's a lot bigger than we ever imagined that, you know, this health, uh, mental health issue, how big it really is. Well, yeah, and we're fortunate and we're grateful that this community of women that and men and families that gather to hang out with us is very positive. But there are, you know, Michael has to sit stand by on a lot of the times when we do these kind of meetups and, and block really oh. aggressive Oof. and... And inappropriate people. You wouldn't from, even believe yeah, the stuff from, I have to block. Yeah. And the challenges I get from. I mean, because Diane has grown into. I mean, like you guys all know, like uh, on her channel here and on Facebook uh, and even on Instagram. I mean, she's grown a lot, but she's grown into this her own entity, and uh, and that's when you get attacked. You know, people will come after you, and they will they will just trash you, you down, they'll yeah. tear you down any way you can I mean so that's a whole and that, thing and that's, had to do with yeah and that's the thing too about health in general you know it's yes fasting does help us a lot and doing watching our nutrition and we have to check in with ourselves mentally and emotionally how we're feeling it's you know I always say it's one thing to have a healthy slam and looking body but if you're a hot mess up here and you don't know how to love yourself and others who cares, right? So it's the big picture thing of health that we really want to always uh, be concerned with. It. And it doesn't mean that anything even has to directly affect you. You know, just the news these days can be enough to just drag you down oh, yeah. and feel like, you know, the world's coming to an end. And so you have to pay attention to those things and make sure that when we're talking about health and we're talking about proving if it works, how are you waking up every day? Are you hopeful? Are you happy? Are you feeling grateful? Do you have habits in place that are going to make sure that you're looking and feeling your best and living your most authentic life? And if you have things in the outskirts that might be dragging you down, whether it's nutrition or a bad test back from a doctor or a ugly relationship that you can't seem to break off of or the news, you have to figure out ways that you can put those in their proper place and heal yourself on all levels for sure. Yeah, you really have to. And like uh, Diane said, there's just so much bad news these days. You could really get caught up into it. And it's really easy for me because I'm really empathetic to, to people and uh, it's just part of who I am. And, and, it, and you have to be careful. You have to guard yourself because it could really uh, pull you under. And uh, you just have to stay stay guarded. And like I said, some of those simple practices mm -hmm. kind of keep us in line with the journaling and the reading and yeah. and working out. Mm -hmm. Working. I know we've all heard this before, right? But working out and particularly, uh, I mean, as much as I love my cardio and getting on the Peloton bike, the lifting weights, it makes a shift it changes something I, yeah. you know and, and it's scientifically proven so i'm not going to sit here and try to break it down to you scientifically but uh it is proven that lifting weights will change your mood mm -hmm. and will change that angst and that anxiety that you have going on so yeah so health is a big picture thing if you have access to getting some tests done and like i say I always like to look at the positives in the aging process, right? Like we're really close to getting that discount at the movie theater. We're really close to getting those Twilight. I'm fifty-five. Discounts. Do I get? No, do I get it now? No, it's sixty something oh, now. Dang it. Yeah, yeah. So you ladies who are sixties and seventies, go use those discounts. We're waiting to get those discounts. Like we are excited about the aging process, and we're looking for all these opportunities that we can take advantage of. And if that means you have access to new sort of. Um, testing that you can have done to prove that this lifestyle is working for you or the choices that you're making to work for you and you have no hidden risk factors take advantage of what it is that you have available to you and like i said some of these tests are not even 
that expensive if you budget for them um, and you are making them part of what it is you have in your, your self-care routine. Creating a daily habit um, routine. We start our day with a big old bottle of water, our gratitude, we get some fresh air outside, we play with our dog before we do anything else because we have to get our mindset right and we have to make sure that we're happy and healthy. And then we have just created this lifestyle that is cemented in who we are. It's not an on and off thing for us anymore. We fast every single day. We make sure that we're conscious in the decisions that we make about our nutrition. That doesn't mean that we're squeaky clean. That means that we make healthy decisions about what it is that we want to incorporate in our life. And I think that's the big catalyst for change that we really need to start incorporating is that you do not have to be squeaky clean in regards of whatever someone's defining as squeaky clean. You have to be happy and conscious about decisions that you're making about your life. Those are the key factors to success with being healthy. And then you got to keep yourself in check and you got to have a partner that's going to see uh, those warning signs in you if you start to fall off and they're going to be able to give you that loving support and say, hey, let's look at some things and see if we can get some stuff figured out. Yeah, sure. and, and getting a scan, at least you know where you're at and that you've improved or you know where you're at and where you need to improve. And that's a positive thing to me. And I think you have to look at it as a positive thing. I mean, I could have fell apart yesterday. 131 calcium score, what is that in my heart? Like, what are you talking about? Uh, you know, but instead of falling apart, I mean, I see it as a positive thing. Like, I feel like that would probably be way worse. I mean, I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to do. Yep. And, I, and I had a, you know, this calcium score. So, you know, know where you're at and, um, and have that help you in the direction that you're you're trying to go no matter what that that score says or that right. report comes back as you know you have a, a starting point and I'm going to go back every year and this thing's going to it's going to improve because I'm going to do everything I can to improve it yeah and have a plan right have a plan and the plan starts with being knowledge based and experience based for you and not having to jump into someone else's um design of what of life is supposed to be. So Michael, I'm going to have you read those if you don't mind. And I'm going to welcome YouTube really quick while you get that part up. Can you do that without having to press your nose up against that? Uh, let's see. Hopefully. Okay. So let's see who we have on YouTube today. Frezza, welcome from Washington. Beatrice, I think it's Beatrice. What a beautiful name. Jessica, hello. I never catch your lives. Glad you could catch us today from Dayton. Uh, Bonnie, hello. Jay, May 2018 grad from Portland, Oregon. Carol from North Dakota. And then Jillian, my doc said my cholesterol is high and wanted to put me on Lipitor. I said no. I've heard bad things about Lipitor. Yeah, there's some other things that you can do too. Uh, so just make sure you do your research and then put a plan in place because if your cholesterol is high, you want to make sure you have a plan to get it down. You don't want to just ignore it because you don't want to take a medicine. So make sure you get yourself on a plan. And then um, Bonnie, I just connected with you two days ago and did a 24 hour fast and wasn't even hungry during the fast. I just need to figure out what to eat now. Yeah, that's always the big thing. Uh, jump into our course our next month. We just closed it for August, uh, but we teach you how to identify the, the right way to eat for you and your body. And then Bethany from Minneapolis, February 2019 graduate, first time um, live. Strength training does lift my emotional state. Always feel better. Good for you, Bethany. And that's the thing yeah. too. I, I truly believe in, like I always say, like the scientific part is great, but if you weren't part of the scientific study, maybe it doesn't apply to you because he lifts weight and it changes his mood. I run on the treadmill to the point of feeling like I'm throwing up and I feel like I've just won the world. So we have different ways of changing our body chemistry and our hormonal makeup by what it is we do physically. So for him, it's lifting weights. For me, it's just killing myself on a treadmill. Um, and so make sure you um, know what your personality needs in order to create those hormonal and mood changes as well. Um, and then uh, Bethany, I already did that. Bonnie, thank you. Uh, open for a better lifestyle of being healthier and almost 68 years old. Uh, Bonnie, congratulations. 68 is a great age. Um, you're a pretty average age for our community here. So welcome. We love having you. Um, and then just hang out with us here on these lives and then get registered in our September course. Uh, we, um, My goal is to teach women how to learn how to feed themselves. So if you're struggling with what to do in your feasting window, 
then the course will be a great opportunity for you to figure out how to feed yourself. And it's crazy. I was the same way. I didn't know how to feed myself either. It happens. So uh, that's what I really love to give women the freedom of that knowledge for sure. And then Jessica just joined the course today. Congratulations, girlfriend. Uh, we started in our community awesome. today and we kick off a live Q&A in the course tomorrow. So three weeks from now, everyone will be feeling like they have created an amazing lifestyle for themselves. You got anything All else right, what do we got here? Uh, okay, let me see. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, Tanya? Tanya. Hello. Uh, we got Lelia. Uh-huh. Bonnie. Bonnie. haven't seen you in forever. It's good to see you. We got Tammy Harper. Hello, Michael and I. Hey, how are you? We got uh, Janine. Hey there. So excited to start the August course with you tomorrow. Cape Town, South, South Africa. Ooh. We have a lot of South Africa South ladies. South Africa awesome. ladies. I love you ladies. <laughs> I love you ladies, and I'm hoping that you'll consider me like a dear friend of yours so that when we come to South Africa, we will have plenty of places <laughs> to stay. <laughs> All right. We got Janet, Janet uh, Grigg. We know her. Rep. Hello from Nevada, July 2017 IF class. Alumni Amy's course. always here. We love got her. got Amy. Liz. Our cousin, our cuz, she's always in the house. She says, I am grateful for the opportunity to be here today. I've been part of this community since 2017. Liz, that name, I know that name's familiar too. Yeah, May 2019, May. Brad. Uh, Nimit, did I say that right? Yep. From, From Toronto. Toronto. Amy, awesome, Michael. Oh, thank you. Uh, so those are just see. the answers. We and we have, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Janet. Janet. How would depression and anxiety work on this program? Well, what we have found for ourselves is that when you create mind maps for yourself of just doing good things for yourself, it changes your mindset about everything. So when you wake up every morning and make the decision to drink a bottle of water to start your day, when you pr create an opportunity for your body to be in a fasted state and that starts to change some of your hormonal makeup, that will naturally change anxiety and depression. When you are generally healthier overall, anxiety and depression, they're showing through scientific studies, also becomes alleviated. And a lot of what we're feeling anxiety-wise and depression-wise for some people starts in our gut. Remember, our gut is also a function of how our brain operates. And so just healing up your gut through making some better nutritional choices and allowing your body the opportunity to heal itself is also alleviating anxiety and depression. And so being healthy in general yields health in general. And then as you start to build this lifestyle of healthy habits and healthy decision making and you start thinking healthier and exposing yourself to healthier things and internally, nutritionally, your body is functioning off of healthier choices, then you reevaluate anxiety and depression. I know for me, depression is something that runs through the lineage of my family. I don't know how far back. I'm a naturally depressed person if I don't proactively offset it. And so you have to kind of know that about your family history, your genetic makeup, or even your own chemical makeup, is that if I don't actively pursue things and expose myself to things and make mind map changes that are positive, I can find myself in a pit of depression. I know that from my past experiences. So it is always the forefront of my mind, it's the forefront of my activities, it's the forefront of my choices, and it's how I have decided to live my life. And so you have to just do a good self gut check, do a little inventory, evaluate your past, and then know that sometimes it's just about changing things as you move forward, for sure. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, it's important to pay close attention that people that are dealing with this, uh, and have had to deal with depression and anxiety, what are they doing? Uh, we just saw uh, somebody on 60 Minutes a couple weeks ago, and this guy is pretty famous. He's a writer and he does a bunch of other stuff. And they asked him what's the one thing that he does that keeps him from falling into that depressed state that uh, he's had to deal with. He described it as a spiral. A, spi a spiral down that just doesn't stop. And he said that he works out. <laughs> How many times do you have to hear that to get it? I mean, like, I'm not saying for you, Janet, but I'm just saying people in general, like, like, how many times do we have to hear, like, these, I mean, these are people that are in the public eye that are saying that they're dealing with this. I just read an article, the guy from, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, the guy with the, the hammer guy from the comic book series. Yeah, anyway, 
good looking guy. He's in he's in that uh, one of those uh, Marvel series uh, shows. You guys probably know who he is, but he explained that his his workouts and the routines that he does that keeps him from falling into that uh, state of anxiety and depression. But it's mm -hmm. it's a big deal nowadays. Is it Thor? Yes, Thor. There you go. Thanks to the community. <laughs> uh, <laughs> filling in the gap. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's hard. And it's, it's the thing where you have to slow down enough to identify your triggers. And this is what we teach in the Intermittent Fasting for Today's Aging Woman course all the time. It's not always so much even what you eat, but it's why and how you're eating it, right? And it's not so much um, how you're feeling, but why are you feeling that way? And how is it that you got to feeling that way? And when you can identify those triggers and then put a new boundary in place, so that trigger now creates a new end result. This is true with everything. It's true with nutrition. It's true with fitness. It's true with um, relationships. It's true with your mood. It's true with how you want to get a promotion at work or how you deal with people in your environment that may not be the best thing for you. How do you let those triggers create a response in you? And when you identify that the response is a negative, then you just change the trigger outcome. And so what I even did just the other day, I needed to get up early to work out. So I slept in my workout clothes. That's a trigger for my brain that as soon as I wake up, I drink my water and I go upstairs and I get my workout done. No distractions in between because I'm already in my workout clothes. And that's just something that I've learned over time. And now I don't have to do that every day, but if I know it's gonna be hard for me to get my workout in, I sleep in my workout clothes and it makes it happen for me. Same thing holds true with if you're, if you know like uh, in, in the certain time of a month, you just get in a bad mood. What can you put in place if you start to calendar that so that you have triggers of happiness that can offset a bad mood? Or what if it, like every day when your husband comes home from work and he throws his you know, briefcase on the couch, what if that causes you to get mad? Can you put yourself in another room when he throws his briefcase on the couch? Maybe that's how he releases his stress for the day. And so that doesn't trigger something for you. So there's, it's amazing how simple some of these triggers can be, but over time they start to build up and they cause us to become anxious or depressed or overwhelmed with whatever it is we have going on in our life. So the first thing is slowing down, becoming conscious is number two, and then three, identifying them and creating a different response, Yeah. right? Yeah, and I think being consistent uh, with the things that, that you're practicing, we, we probably should do a whole nother Friday on this subject because yeah. this is a really important subject. Uh, uh, but you know, there's, there's definitely remedies, you know, and if you're, being consistent about it, you're, you're going to definitely feel better. Right. Like I said, with the journaling, uh, I saw, I think it was uh, Barbara Bush wrote something about how she dealt with uh, anxiety and depression and, and it didn't go away till she started volunteering. Yeah. She started volunteering, it went away. I mean, so you got to figure out what's going to work for you. And a lot of women deal with it too. Like when you think about the fact that you've had this job for most of your life, right? And a lot of times we've had a job at home and we've given up jobs outside of the home to raise human beings, to go off into society and, and be, be good members of society. And then your kids leave because they go off to college or they get married or whatever it is they do. And then we have this empty nest syndrome. And for a lot of women, it's a really sad and depressing and lonely time, right? So even for us, we have to catch that before it happens and know like, hey, we did a good job. We just raised human beings and they're out in the world and they're being productive and they're successful and they're happy. We need to pat ourselves on the back and not feel like it's the worst time of our life. And I think sometimes just reframing things. Um, you know, and we talk about this a lot with intermittent fasting. Michael and I talked about it when he first started. It's not what you're giving up, it's what are you gonna gain, right? And that's just a simple paradigm shift in your brain. What can you gain if you incorporate something like intermittent fasting? We talk about hungry is where the magic happens. We talk about being an empowered, empowered woman in a state of hunger. We talk about gaining control of our time and our energy. And when you put things in a different perspective, then you can really start doing some things to force your brain to think in a different way. You have to make it first in your mind, the forefront of your mind, a conscious decision, and you have to put those triggers in place. Otherwise, you revert back to your normal, comfortable, easy self, which could be depression and anxiety. It's just what's naturally comfortable for you. I fight it every day. Michael fights it himself, not because we've 
you know, we have any major crises going on in our life. It's just the way we've been conditioned. It's just the way we are. And so knowing that means you can have a plan of attack. Yeah. Uh, do we have anybody else on here? Let's see, we left off at Janet. Okay, we have uh, Angela's here. She says hello. Uh, Lynn is here from Connecticut. Hit Jan it. Bollock. Janet Bollock had it had for, it for, 30, oh, for 34 years. Okay, I'm so thank you. Anxiety, I don't know. My anxiety was elevated when we lost our daughter. Oh, God, I'm so sorry to yeah. hear that. Christmas Eve. It's Christmas Eve has been helping me cope. Oh, thank you for your platform. Oh, yeah, you're, you're so, so welcome. So, so sorry to hear that. Yeah, so sorry to hear that about your daughter. I know losing a loved one like that is one of those things that uh, takes everything in you to pull yourself out of it. But it sounds like you're finding something, intermittent fasting, that's helping you pull out of it. And so that's that thing. You, you hold on to that for dear life, and you use that. You use it and unapologetically use the things that you need to use to pull into your life to get you out of those hard times. There's no shame in needing help. There's no shame in using something like intermittent fasting or a, or a support group or a friend group or whatever it is. As long as it's positive, you go into it all in. You use it for everything that it can provide for you. And you keep reminding yourself of the good until the good becomes something that just becomes automatic. Yeah, like I said, we, we probably should uh, yeah, pick up Friday that, that we do this subject again because, uh, you know, I think we're all vulnerable to it no matter who you are because you think about it, we're all attached to loved ones. Right. You know, somebody's going to die on us. Uh, uh, friends at work, I mean, that kind of stressed me out. I had three friends at work. I mean, people, I'm talking about guys I work beside every day die on me three this year that was hard to deal with i mean you're talking to a guy one day and the next day he's completely gone you're going to his funeral i mean it's hard it's very hard to deal with so uh not only that we're all but, vulnerable to it but when they're in your also your peer circle like right like yeah so, you start wondering about your your own mortality like yeah am i like am i okay like yeah. is this going to happen to me too like right. it's happening to my friends you right. know so right it's it's a really hard thing to deal with right very hard Yep, yep. So we'll pick that. We'll pick up this discussion yeah, um, another Friday for sure. We have yep. lots of things that we can kind of add to it. Some personal experiences of ourselves that we mm -hmm. had to get through, um, and some tips and tricks that we use every day to kind of keep ourselves in that healthy state all the way yep, around. Absolutely. Uh, okay. And then someone asked here if the keto monitor is necessary. It's not necessary. I have. I was very, very successful with intermittent fasting for three years without any sort of blood monitoring at all. I just learned how to listen to the signs and signals that my body sent me. Uh, this last year, I have been on a quest to just experiment with some deeper healing and some changes in my life. And so I started testing just to curiosity's sake. So it's not necessary if you can afford it and it seems like it would be a value to you. Yes, for sure. I put links in places that you guys can find it or email me and I'll tell you what my experience is, is and one of the best ones that I think is on the market today to use for sure. Okay, cool. So congratulations for everyone who's joined us for August. I'm so excited to spend the next three weeks with you. Um, everyone is in our community group now. They're all welcoming themselves and introducing themselves and making new girlfriends. I'm super excited about that. And then tomorrow morning, don't, don't forget at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, I will be inside your community group with you doing a live welcome in Q&A. It's one of my favorite things to do when we start a new course. So I'm looking forward to all of that. If you have any questions and you can't make it on the live, just post them in the community group. We will get them all answered for you. And then uh, we have closed the course for August. We close it the day before it starts so that we give everyone a chance to get in and get acquainted and get familiar with their course. Um, but our registration for September is open. We leave it open all month. So if you're one of those people that you need to just make the commitment so that you can start thinking along these lines, the uh, course registration is open. We would love to have you join us in September as well. Have a fantastic weekend, you guys. We hope the information yeah, we shared weekend. Uh, with you today will open up to your, or your eyes to thinking beyond just the normal information that we think about as far as keeping ourselves healthy as we age. Um, if you would like more information, Michael's going to include the link to the article that he read from and the name of the test that he took in our Friday email for next week. So make sure you are on our email list. That is where we send a lot of this um, supplemental information that we talk about in our lives. We'll make sure that we link all of that in our email for next Friday. You can go to fortodaysagingwoman.com to get signed up on our email list. Um, and then we'll see you guys around the community this weekend. Have a good one. Yeah, have a great weekend.